This video will explore the topic, solving equations with zero, one, or infinitely many solutions. For this topic, you will be given an equation and will need to use algebra to determine the solution. Here is an example of a problem you may encounter. The general method to work through these problems is first to distribute, then combine like terms, next solve for the unknown variable, and last determine the solution. That doesn't seem too bad. But how am I supposed to know if there is zero, one, or infinitely many solutions? Great question. If your answer does not contain a variable and instead has two numbers set equal to each other that do not equal each other, like 2 equals negative 8, then there will be no solution because 2 is never equal to negative 8. So the answer is no solution. The second possibility is that you will find a specific value for your variable when you solve the equation, like y equals 4. Last, if you have, for example, 0 equals 0, 3 equals 3, or negative 19 equals negative 19, then your solution will be all real numbers, since any real number used in place of the variable causes the equation to be true. Okay, I think that makes sense. Can we do some examples? Absolutely. Let's go through three separate examples to illustrate each possible solution. To solve this equation, we first distribute. The 2 distributes to the x and the 4, and the 4 distributes to x and the negative 2. Then, we combine the like terms, and we see that we will have 2x plus 3 equals 4x minus 11. Now we can subtract 2x from both sides of the equation, so that we will only have one term involving the variable x. This simplifies to 3 equals 2x minus 11. The next step is adding 11 to both sides of the equation. This results in 14 equals 2x. Lastly, we divide both sides by 2. The result is x equals 7. Because the solution is x equals 7, this falls into the one solution category. How about you give this example a try? Okay, so distributing is the first step. Doing so to both sides, I got 3w minus 3 plus 4 equals 3w plus 9 minus 2. Now, combining like terms, I get 3w plus 1 equals 3w plus 7. But I'm a little confused about where to go from here. If I subtract 3w from both sides, then it cancels itself out. You're on the right track. When you subtract 3w from both sides, just like you mentioned, this will eliminate the terms containing w. This gives us the most simplified solution, 1 equals 7. But since 1 is never equal to 7, this equation is no solution. Therefore, it falls under the category no solution. Oh, I see now. Can I do the last problem? Of course. Here is the example. Distributing the 4 and the 3, I get the following expression. Now, I combine like terms. Doing so, I arrived at 8 plus 3t equals 8 plus 3t. If I now subtract 3t from both sides, I get 8 equals 8. This falls into the infinite solution category in which our answer is all real numbers. Excellent work! If you are ever working through a problem and get to a point at which the expressions on both sides of the equal sign are the same, like 8 plus 3t equals 8 plus 3t, you can stop there and recognize that all real numbers are solutions. This step may be easier for you to visualize that there are infinite solutions. No matter what we plug in for t, the solution will always be the same number on both sides. It is really up to you on which step you stop at once you determine that both sides of the equation show the same expressions in the case when the equation has infinite solutions. This makes a lot more sense now. I think I am ready to work on my own.